All right. I am excited to be with Rick, who recently microacquired a couple companies for, uh, I believe, high six figures and is the COO of G2 Communications. So, Rick, uh, thank you for joining me on this podcast. Yeah, man. It's good to be here. Well, to kick things off, um, do you want to just maybe give a background of just yourself and um, uh, maybe companies you acquired or your current parent company? Yeah, yeah. So, so um, uh, let's see here. I, I started. Uh, I started my first. Uh, well, I, I've always been sort of an entrepreneur at heart, right? I've always had a side hustle, right? And I think, I think that's how a lot of entrepreneurs get started. It's like uh, if you, you know, you kind of you have a main job or you have a little job and you want to do something else and you create something and you think it's cool and you kind of just keep on. But I guess in 2011 is when I started my, my main uh, company here, it's G12 communications, right? So started in 2011 uh, after the company that I was working for um, uh, got acquired by Zayo. So a big fiber company. So that company gets acquired. Uh, I, you know, I, I leave with a little bit of cash and I go, I think I can start my own business at this point. Let's see if there's enough runway. Right. Uh, I go into debt, start G12 communications. And then, you know, it's a, it's a long haul. We're still, you know, uh, still building G12 communications, but we're significantly bigger now. Uh, but, uh, this year, um, uh, actually last year I got excited about small, uh, investing in small businesses, right. And, and, and businesses that I can, I can grow that are somewhat tied to what I do today. Right. So today G12 communications is a voice over IP provider. We provide, uh, services, you know, to, to businesses, you know, globally, mostly nationwide. Uh, and, and then I was like, okay, well, what can I do? That's, that's in that same sort of space. So I started a, uh, an online sort of Shopify store called teams device center. So everybody's moving to Microsoft teams. So I thought, you know, we'd, we'd sling some headsets and, and teams devices there. So we do that. And then I we got introduced to micro acquire. And I, I think I wrote you a nasty gram one day because I was like, do you know that I wake up every morning now and look forward to the emails that I get from MicroAcquire? <laughs> and it's like, instead of looking at my email that I, whatever email I should be looking at, I'm like, oh, let's take a look at MicroAcquire. That's like the, that's like the first thing I look at every morning. So, so anyway, so yeah. So in, in February, it became almost like, I don't know if you've ever gotten inside, and this is a bit of a sidetrack, but if you've ever been on like on this eBay kick as an example, right? You know, this is a long time ago, but you buy something on eBay and you're like, oh, that's cool. And you go buy something else on eBay, you start bidding on it. So you go into this little pattern of, let me get a couple of things. So this is pretty cool. And so I, you know, I, I, uh, I engage with the company on, uh, on MicroAcquire. I, I knew the, of them outside of MicroAcquire, but they were on MicroAcquire and we, we engaged a little bit and then I ended up buying them. And so we closed on that February 1st. Right. And then again, you get so excited about shopping about businesses, again, businesses that are in my, in my area of expertise, essentially. So I'm like, Oh, this would be great technology. This is a great technology to add on to whatever it is I do. So then I saw this other one and I thought, well, could I put a deal together for that? And the interesting thing is that I talked to the guys three or four or five months prior to, uh, uh, I, I found them on micro acquire, but I had talked to them, I don't know, yeah, four or five months. And then one day I was doing this whole what's my revenue goals, my personal revenue goals for 2022, literally up on my whiteboard back there, right? It's where it was at. And I write uh, one of the companies that is on MicroAcquire. I had already asked about their information. And so I kind of thought about it. I'm like, I like that business. I think that's pretty cool. So I put their name on there and I had already talked to that first company. Well, out of the blue, the first company pings me and says, let's, let's meet for coffee. I'm like, well, I already talked to you. And I didn't think you were interested in, in what I was interested in putting together. And so they pinged me a little later, but we had a really good conversation. And so we, 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 uh, he scheduled coffee with me, an in-person meeting. They happened to be out of Seattle. So an in-person meeting and, uh, and I, we put a deal together like over coffee. And I was like, I came back and I was like, nice. shit, I think I just bought another company. <laughs> uh, so, so that was kind of the, uh, that was it, man. That was uh, so yes, two companies, uh, February 1st closed on February 1st and then what was yesterday and then closed on February 24th. So within, within three, three weeks of each other, something like that. Yeah. Pretty good timing on this podcast. Cause we scheduled this before you closed the second company. So, um, that, 
That's awesome. Um, <laughs> do you, what what are the two companies? Do you mind? Um, no, sharing? no, no, no. You don't, no, have, no. you don't have to, but no, no, for sure. So, so Monster VoIP is another one. They're uh, you know basically a, a VoIP company just like G Twelve Communications. Uh, the brand is really cool though, right? They got a young, hip, cool brand. They have cool technology, you know. And I'm like, I, I like what they do. And and uh, today we sell G Twelve into big organizations, hospitals, at you know school districts. Uh, uh, government agencies and that vibe at monster VoIP was young and hip and cool and, and full of tech, right? So you, you go to some smaller businesses and, and I think it's a great brand for, for, as an example, for college kids to go share. So my dream, to be honest with you, is to have a nationwide massive college kid sales force for monster VoIP because everybody, every business needs voice services. Everybody needs to transition from whatever they had before to something that allows them this sort of flexibility of hybrid work environment and stuff like that. And monster VoIP is that it's, so it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, if I had young kids selling G12, I feel like it would taint the G12 brand because the G12 brand is like solid, like older folk communication. When I say older folk, I mean like guys like me that have been in the business for 20 years, you like get and, goods. And, and, and enterprise sales. Is probably yeah, what yeah, I get, there, there you go. So it's like enterprise stuff, right? Whereas Monster is like, hey, let's go, let's go talk to small biz and say, hey, you know, what do you need? Let's, let's see, let's give you something really cool, right? For a good price. Uh, so I, Monster VoIP is one. And the other one is engage.co. And engage is really cool because they're, they're, it's like, it's like chat technology, but it's a bit different than everybody else, right? So everybody else has got AI and chat bots and there's a million of them out there. Well, theirs is like, they're all about like, hey, let's put a face on the website and, and show you who you're talking to. And if they're available, let's take a look at their presence. If they're available, you can chat with them right here. It's like exposing teams, right? On your website, as an example, is what it's kind of like. Nice. And they get big customers like the Dolphins, the Cleveland Browns, the NCAA, the PGA Tour. Like they've no got way. some cool, cool customers. So I'm excited to take that over and uh, rebrand it, keep the name, but rebrand it and uh, and kind of uh, spice it up a little bit. And again, it's in the same space that I work in today, right? So it's B- B2B sales essentially for communication applications, right? Yeah, I, I love this strategy. I mean, it's basically just grow through acquisition. And with... Um, monster, um, voice IP, you're essentially entering like a new segment of your existing market. Maybe yeah. I, I'm assuming it's maybe, um, SMB. Yeah. It's SMB for monster. It'd be just straight SMB. And then we were chatting before, but, um, yeah, like give college kids sales jobs. It's like the number one skill set. I always tell founders, like, please learn how to sell. It's like 90% of the job. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get inspiration from, I'll tell you this when I was a kid, uh, I think I was in high school going into college. I worked for a company called Cutco. So if, if, if that, for, those, that, for those of you that, know, that, that's a grind. There it is. Vector marketing, right? So it's like this whole Cutco selling knives to your family, essentially, right? Is what it is. I, I'm, uh, I, I'm a firm believer that like having like a SCR role or BDR role, you know, the the demo setting role, it just you're, you're at the bottom of the podium toll in terms of, you know, where you sit in the sales or organization, but just what you learn from it, the rejection, just how to, you know, open up a conversation. Uh, I think it's just a skill set that just carries into like every single part of your career for the rest of your life. A hundred percent. I don't know if you've been to this website, it's called micro choir. Right. And so I, they, I, I know a guy that works actually. <laughs> They have, they have like, they're, they're, there's a ton of tech guys on there. And I say tech guys, software guys that are building amazing tools that build amazing sort of applications that I look at and go from a, I, I mean, I'm in, I'm selling to businesses every day. And I look at them and go, I see where this fits. I see where this fits. I see where this fits, but they don't have the sales organization or the know how to build a sales organization or the idea to build a sales organization, what it looks like. Right. That I feel like there's a lot of those. If I look at the listings and man, I look at the listings every single day. It's like need to be to be sales team, need to be to be sales team, need to be to be sales team. Right. And that's like that's yeah. like over and over. And so it's like when you know how to build sales teams and deliver and, and do some and do branding well, it's just it, it gets to be pretty exciting because I look at this and go, boy, I could certainly leverage, you know, guys that have built and gals that have built an amazing product. And I can take that and I can brand it and, and either keep them or, or help them transition to me or whatever it is. Right. So I get, I get pretty excited about it. 
Nice. I love that. And I, I totally agree. I mean, there's the typical builder and then the scaler, you know, somebody knows how to scale the business. Somebody knows how to put the business together. Um, you know, I guess my next question would be, um, you know, if you had tips for, you know, sellers, uh, it sounds like if you're on micro every day, you're probably looking at a, a, a lot of different businesses. Um, what are, if you had to give like, you know, people looking to sell businesses on micro like two pieces of advice, what would it be? Uh, here, here's one that would be interesting because not, I think a lot of acquirers out there, and this is for the sellers, but I'm going to start with the acquirers, uh, may not be as aggressive as, as I am as an example. Like, hey, let's put a deal together. Here's what I can do and here's what I can do. But let's figure out how to put a deal together, right? I, I like what your product is. Um, so, so for a seller, I think if you're interested, if you're really interested in putting your, your, your business out there and selling your business, um, because particularly those that, that are just kind of hanging on and have already found a different project to work on. Like let somebody know you're willing to negotiate up front. Like let somebody know this is what you, this is, you know, you're, you're willing to, to build, you know, good terms in to, to attract someone to take it and do something really good with it. I'll give you just a quick example. I found another company on MicroAcquire that I had uh, was in touch with. They were, I think, out of Italy. They were out of the Bay Area. They were a Y Combinator company at one point. Uh, they, uh, I think, they're back in Italy, and and they have a really, really cool platform. Like their platform, uh, it, it was, I mean, it was for businesses to to create content, right? And I thought it was a really awesome platform. And and I, they're they in, in my last conversation with them is that they 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 were selling the the technology to someone who's going to piecemeal it essentially. Right. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. Oh gosh. Cause like I get your vision. Like when, a, when I can sync with an entrepreneur and get their vision and understand what they're doing. And then I can relate it to my experience because like, I got a great hair, man. I, you know, I've been in this space a long time. Yeah. Uh, then it, it, you know, I'm just like, Oh man, I feel bad that somebody's tearing their, their baby apart. Right. So you know, before you get to a point where it's it's going to be you know uh, uh, put to pasture, if you will, right? Give give somebody an opportunity to take it and run with it by letting them know upfront that hey, I'm willing to do something crazy to to put it in the hands of someone who can do something really cool with it. So yeah. that's I can I, I guess that'd be number one. Would be number two. Oh man, for sellers, yeah. Yeah, you can't leave me hanging. Uh, you know, uh, if you, if you uh, put the, and this is, this is, uh, you know, I think put together a good information pack, right? If you put together a good information pack, think about a buyer and think about all the little things that a buyer is going to want in a due diligence process, right? I had the luxury of knowing my business probably better than other guys in my space, right? I think I know my business in the voice space better than the guys at Avoninger or Ring or the big guys, right? I, I know this business very, very well down to the penny. And so I know, you know, what, what it looks right, you know, from a financial perspective, what looks right for me. Um, you know, other businesses like an online business, like uh, the chat business, I don't know the, the financials as well as, as I do the voice space, but put together a package that is uh, that you put some time into. It's not just a snapshot of your stripe, re you know, your stripe revenue. It's not a snapshot, a, a, a picture of your uh, of your account statements, you know, for your from your bank, right? Those those sort of things are they're they're interesting, and that's great that you can show that. Uh, a spreadsheet showing all of your cost is is cool, right? If you have a spreadsheet that shows all your cost, uh, having a PowerPoint presentation on your market. Right, what the market size looks like, what you're, who you're trying to sell to, who's your avatar, right? The people that you know. When I say who's your avatar, like who are you selling to, right? Is it a niche business, right? Putting together a really good deck and a really good spreadsheet, and then a really good sort of uh, small, and, and it doesn't have to be crazy big. Like you don't have to spend weeks on this stuff, right? This is you know putting together a spreadsheet is is a, is an afternoon if you've got the information out of QuickBooks, let's just say. Or if you've got your banking info and your billing info, then you can put together a cool spreadsheet based on what Stripe sends you, right? Or what Stripe has available to you. And I say Stripe just because it seems like that's where everybody's at. Um, but those two things, a spreadsheet and a PowerPoint, and then some supporting information around it, right? Are very powerful, right? And that's, and that's really it. Because a lot of the stuff that I see uh, out there, it's, you know, here's our competitors, here's this, here's, you know, we're, here's just our basic numbers, right? 
And then here's, even when you ask for additional information, it's not a full pack. It's just like, oh, here's a snapshot of this. Here's a little spreadsheet. You know what I mean? But, but give us some more, give us some more detail as an acquirer, give us some more detail about who your avatar is, what the market size looks like, what, you know, what, you know, do you expect, how do you expect to penetrate that market? You know, all those different things would be interesting. So I know, I know the voice space, I know the voice space size, so I know how big it is. So I know that if I throw a rock out of my you know, window, I can hit a potential customer, right? So who are your potential customers? You know, is it difficult to sell to those sorts of things, right? But I think if you put together a couple of things like that, you have a much better shot at getting at least a decent look from, from buyers that are interested in acquiring businesses. That's really, really good advice. Because have you ever heard the saying, you know, most startups are bought, not sold? Oh, I haven't. No. Yeah, there's a saying, and it's not true. It basically means Google shows up to your door and they're like, hey, here's your check. You got acquired. But, you know, a, a lot of founders don't understand, like, you actually have to, like, sell your business. You have to point out the opportunities. You have to point out the market. Who are you selling to? What's working? What's not working? And for, you know, maybe buyers like you, you're looking at a lot of businesses. So to stand out even, just like in sales, like standing out above your competition you know, because you're probably looking at one deal or five other deals. And so the more information you can really, you know, show, number one, it just shows you're serious about selling the business. So that right. really kind of cuts, I'm sure, a lot of time for you. And then two, you know, really just openly sharing like the opportunity of buying this business. Yeah. Um, I think I think that's um, fantastic advice. Um, so I guess, um, you know, my next question would be, um, you know, when, when you, when you think about, you know, where you want to take these two businesses, um, how far do you think you could, um, uh, take them? If I, if I could ask from an ARR perspective. Yeah. Like, are you, are you looking to grow these substantially and resell? Are you looking to roll them into your existing company? No. Yeah. I'm not going to roll them in. I'm going to keep them as separate entities. Uh, I'll tell you what I think is, is going to happen. I think, uh, I think monster is an example can scale, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, again, that, that could be a, a, a massively scalable organization. Right. Um, so I think uh, monster, you, we could, I could scale that to, you know, 10, 10 million dollars in ARR pretty not, not easily. It's been a long haul uh, at G12 as an example to get past that, but ultimately uh, I think it'd be a $10 million organization. Like there's, there's no desire to just kind of get in and get out. Right. It's the space that I understand. Uh, I think I'd like to create, I, I enjoy creating jobs for people. So I think that's uh, you know, I think that's a pretty cool place. Cause you know, you treat your employees like, like you would your family essentially. And maybe people disagree with me, but I have a good connection with all of my team members. Right. And that doesn't matter if they're here, El Salvador, the Philippines, it doesn't matter, you know, cause I've got, you know, employees globally. Um, uh, so, so yeah, I think that, that is there. I think the other one, uh, uh, engage, Oh, you know, um, I don't think there's a, there's a, uh, there's a shelf life for that either because you know, there's so many, so many different businesses out there that, that use the engage services because believe it or not, there's the early adopters, right? You've got the early adopters. I forget what the, the little graph is. It's called, there's something called, uh, some, some theory or something. Yeah. It's like, um, uh, early adopters, um, yeah. uh, or early majority, late majority, yeah. uh, mainstream and like laggards. Or something like that. Exactly. So, so you look at this, like take a, and I'm going to use my space, uh, you know, uh, not the old website, this, but, but my, the telecom space, you look at that and you go, <laughs> a lot of people I've been in the cloud PBX space since like 2007 or eight, right? Like a long, long time at my prior company and stuff like that. So you look at that and it's been a long time here we are in 2022, and, and now it's sort of mainstream, if you will, right now, everybody is transitioning to some cloud PBX platform. If it's not teams, it's going to be, you know, some other cloud PBX platform. Right. So now it's like, you're, you're sitting here, you know, 12, 13 years later, 14 years later, and it's finally becoming seriously mainstream. So then I look at this chat business and, and everyone like the fancy stuff is the, you know, the AI chat bots, this, you know, this machine learning chat bot and all that good stuff. But there are millions and millions and millions of normal businesses that are just picking up a normal telephone every single day. You think those guys know what a chatbot is? You think those guys care what a chatbot is, right? If they're changing tires, as an example, and maybe somebody's coming to the website, sure. But, you know, whatever their business is, you know, uh, there's, there's just so many businesses out there that don't know any of this stuff at all. 
right? And so putting a chat platform into a business website that is showing the picture of the people that they can talk to, to me is really cool. It may be kind of old, but nobody's doing it. It's, you know, their picture is here. I can go click on a picture if they're available and see their presence that they're open to chat with. I think it's really cool. So I think the, the, the shelf life is at least another 10 years for something like that. And I think that could scale to, you know, uh, well over $10 million in ARR on its own. I, I, I love your mindset, you know, so there's, there's multiple different types of buyers I speak to. Some are, you know, buy and hold. They usually will, their goal is to reduce expenses, increase profitability, but I love your growth mindset because that's where I usually see um, most of the opportunity on micro requires finding, you know, really good products and then putting together, you know, stellar go to market strategy and, and executing on that. Yeah. Yeah. Scala. Why would you like, I, I don't like the whole buy and holding great. I can buy and hold and I can make, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 grand a month off, off businesses like this. Right. And just kind of acquire another business, do the same thing. But like my idea is to like, there's so much more to, I look at it just to holistically and go, this is an amazing product. I want to get it out of the marketplace. Like, like let's, let's get it crazy big. Right. And it's not to go and build an organization to sell. I, I really don't, haven't thought about selling a business. I mean, I've got G12 and I think G12 is an amazing business and I wake up every day loving what I do. I can tell, like, it's uh, impe- like, I can tell you, just, you, you're, you're a B2B sales guy and I dig it, man. That's it. I I'm, I was a sales guy forever turned engineer for a long time, started slash founder. And then now like I've converted to, you know, here, let's run operations. I actually just changed my title to chief revenue officer now because I've got some smarter people in me now that run operations inside of G12 as an example. And I'm like, yeah, this, thank goodness. We got much smarter people than me. I, I hate to be the guy that knows more than somebody because it's like, that's terrible because I feel like I'm woefully inadequate in that space. So, um, you know, it's yeah. pretty, it's pretty fun, man. When you scale an organization. So yeah, I wake up every day, loving the stuff and go, how do I grow other businesses, you know, that, that I, you know, could use my skill set. That's awesome. Well, I got, um, three more questions for you and then I'm, I'm going to let you run, but this is, this has been fantastic. Um, the first question. So these are kind of just the last rapid fire, but, um, if you had to give like one tip to just entrepreneurs, um, in general, um, what would it be? I know that's super, broad it could be literally anything maybe it's learn sales maybe it's be just if if someone came up to you as an entrepreneur looking to start a business um what's the one piece of advice you give them if they're looking to start a business don't do it i'm <laughs> just kidding uh if they're looking to start a business it's harder than you think uh, like it really is like the, the grind is real i'll tell you what for everybody that's built a successful business you've got to you got to like tip your hat and go, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive because you've created something from scratch, right. And built something that people are buying now without your involvement. And that's really cool to see it evolve like that. Right. Um, I, I would say prepare for, uh, it's a longer haul than you think. If you think you're going to go build a business and, and inside of 18 months or, or, or two years, like have money flying in the door, you're going to just like, yeah, I'm buying my Ferrari next week. This is exciting. Uh, I get to call myself an entrepreneur on, on my LinkedIn profile and stuff like that. It's, it's harder than you think. And it takes, uh, it takes a lot of different people to help you be successful. And what I mean by that is this, I started, I can't tell you how many businesses I started, semi started growing up, right? I sold, I had a a domain called cigarbox.com when I was like 18 or 19, I was spamming people before, uh, before can spam as an example, right? (laughs) Uh, I did like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, I did a bunch of little things. And so none of them really materialized and they didn't materialize because I didn't have the right skill set from a business perspective, from a financial perspective. Right. And when I met up with my partner, uh, at G12 communications, uh, my partner is, is a financial and legal and, and, uh, uh, you know, kind of that, that solid sort of keep me in bounds. Right. Like he's like literally just like keeps me in bounds. Cause I'm like, I'm everywhere. I'm creating and creating and creating and creating. And he helps me. He just helps keep me in bounds. And so I think the right team is important because you can't do everything on your own. It's not just about, oh, here's another one. This is like another tip because this is it. You know, it's about the team. Number one, right. Number two, uh, I'll say that it is uh, more than just creating an amazing product. Like you can create an amazing product and, and maybe you're the next Steve jobs or Bill Gates or whatever it is, but you still got to sell it. Like I'm a, I'm a firm believer and you still have to sell a product. You can build something beautiful, but if nobody knows about it, you're not going to get any customers. Right. So having the right teams goes back to having the right team. So having the right team in place 
to help you with the facets of the business that you're not the best at. You may be the creative thinker and you may be the coder and the builder, you know, but you need a business person that's going to help you structure the organization properly. And you need someone that can go help you grow the business and that's in sales, right? So you need all different things. Uh, you need all those components within your organization to be able to build something that is remotely scalable. Right. I mean, like, like I said, I, yeah. I see beautiful products every day on your site and I go, Oh God, if I, if I could just buy another business right now, it'd be great. But like, I don't have the bandwidth to buy another business right now. Right. Like, I'm just like, I got to get these guys hired up and that means just put the right people in place. And that's what I'm talking about. Right. My first, my first goal of all these businesses is to put the right team in place, put the right team in place. And fortunately I'm in a place where I can hire a few people now to put in the right place. So I know what I expect out of them. Right. Cause I've, I've lived through this now. So it's like, put the right team in place and they can go scale this product because this product is cool. Man, you got to write a book. Like you're, <laughs> you're you, I, I agree with you on so many levels. The, the way that I was, I, I totally, totally agree with. Um, yeah. If you build a product, like people aren't just going to come and buy it. I always say, you know, distribution is more important than product in terms of just, there's hundreds of thousands of startups, you know, in the market today. And it's more important than ever to stand out and actually learn sales, learn marketing, um, you know, like, like everything aside from product and how to get in front of customers is crucial. Yeah. Cause you see a lot of the times where, you know, not even the best product wins markets. Um, sure. But anyways, uh, the second question I have for you, and then I have one more and then uh, I'll, I'll let you run, but this, this, this is awesome, Steve. Or excuse me, Rick. Um, who who's like an entrepreneur you look up to? Like, if you had to pick one, or maybe you get a chance to get dinner with um, an <laughs> entrepreneur, who who are you picking, Rick? I uh, I think I'm gonna go with Mark Cuban. Like, I think I'd go with Mark Cuban, and and like the dude worked hard. Like his first, you know, his first business, just grind, grind, grind. Didn't take vacation. I think he's relentless. Right. I could have, you know, like I, 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 I watched like, you know, obviously I, I watch little videos on Elon Musk all the time and, 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 and a little bit of Bill Gates, not so much, not necessarily Mark Zuckerberg, but, but, but I like at Mark Cuban and go maybe cause he's closer to my age and than, than a lot of these guys, but, but I look at him and I go, that guy did, he did the groundwork, man. He just grinds and grinds and grinds and he's relentless. Right. And, and his, his motto that I think is for me, it resonates with me is like, you know, revenue cures everything right? Like revenue can cure everything. And so That's when true. you've got, <laughs> when you've got a mess of a business as an example, but you've got revenue coming in the door, you, you can, can go fix, fix that. Yeah. You go fi if you've got no revenue coming in the door, there's nothing to fix, right? You, you can't fix anything. Uh, we're so, we're so on the same page. Like that's why I always say distribution of a product, because when you are able to sell the product, you can improve the product and that's how you get the best product. And it's just this big circular it's a loop. life cycle, man. But it starts with driving revenue, you know, that's it. You should uh, try cold emailing uh, Mark Cuban. He just <laughs> responded to me a couple of times and I, I'm like, how do you have time for this? You're a billionaire. Like what? Uh, that's I'm, awesome uh, that's very cool I, I mean i just sent him like hey i'm working on micro car and he's like cool and i'm like oh my gosh you responded like <laughs> you don't please don't respond to this again but i just want to say that's really cool of you uh, okay <laughs> mine would be i love you that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> um no, okay cool. uh last question um uh favorite book or a book that you'd recommend to um entrepreneurs You got it right here. Thinking Grow Rich. Oh, that's a classic. It is a classic. I got a bunch of, actually, I, I like a bunch of Russell Will, uh, Russell Wilson, Russell Brunson stuff. So I got a lot of Russell Brunson stuff on my desk right now. So uh, ClickFunnels is pretty cool. Uh, there's a lot of cool things that they do. Uh, but but all time classic and and my personal sort of, it almost looks like a Bible. You know, it's like, it's a yeah, you, you, you pulled that out with some authority. I'll, I'll give you. I'd recommend um, check out this book, um, Play Bigger. It's about um, branding and um, like category creation. I think you would really dig this one. Um, it talks about like how Salesforce created like the the CRM like marketplace, uh, like basically created SaaS um, yeah. software as a service. Oh, that's cool. Um, play Play Bigger, huh? I'll uh, I'll I'll dig that up. 
and I'll I'll give that book another reread. But uh, did you did you did you write it? No, no. Yeah, here here's the here's the biggest piece I like out of that book, and I'm just going to tell you my like my like the, the piece that resonates with me. In that. And there's a lot of things in there that resonate with me, but but the um, applied knowledge you can make money on if you have applied knowledge, right? You can be the smartest dude in the world, but if you can't create something, if you can't apply it to something very very it's specific applied knowledge. And you can't apply it to something specific and know something very well, know your market, know your niche, know your delivery, know whatever to know it really well. If you do know this space really well, and this is why every major book will tell you, oh, do something that, you know, do something that, you know, because, you know, when you're a kid and you're starting out, you go, oh, that's bullshit. I can just go do this. This is, looks easy for you to do, right? But it is because if you understand some, some very specific product or, or a way, or, you know, anything you can create a business around that and do and be extremely, you know, extremely wealthy. Right. So specific applied knowledge. Yeah. An another way of putting that would be um, having a unique insight in the market. So you see something that others don't sometimes just from personal experience, like you've experienced a problem personally and you're like, this thing sucks. I got an idea on how to fix it. It's, it, uh, it, it's true. And, and uh, I'll tell you, you right now, the technology that's out there and, and the, uh, the creativity in some, and I'll say young people, right, is pretty awesome because there's a lot of things that you could revolutionize, right, that that is, they're not ready just yet, but they're going to be. Like, I think of all this Alexa stuff, right, voice sort of, you know, voice activation for this. Now, voice stuff has been around forever, right? Big companies like Nuance, who was acquired by Microsoft a couple of years ago, right, a few years back. It's all, you know, voice stuff, but the AI that's available today for voice stuff. I mean, if you if, like, like my thought this morning, I'm driving to uh, Starbucks this morning and I think about, huh, it would be cool. My daughter's name is Alyssa. Okay. And I think about all the voice activation stuff that's going on right now. I'm like, how cool would it be if I could build in Alyssa into a soft phone to do, you know, to be like the virtual receptionist that's included with your phone system. Like, that's like, it's not like nobody in the phone business has that today. Like they, they just don't have that, right? They have an IVR or they have an, you know, an auto attendant and stuff like that, but they don't have like someone that's actively listening and doing something while they're talking. Right. And that I, I bet anybody that's listening out there that is a developer looks at that and goes, what? that's super easy. But what I know is I know how to put it into a product. I know how to put it into a product. I know how to get it out to the marketplace. Right. Yeah, and and that's why. I know that that's why if I can find someone to deliver on some products that I like, right, then I can create something that's really cool. And it just, again, it adds on to what I do today because I know this space, but that's like something that's like new and it'd be hard to go sell it to the world unless you kind of mashed it in with a product that's their everyday product. You're not creating a category as an example, but you're creating the use, the you know utilization of your of your product or of your, your creativity, right? Yeah. You're plugging it right into a uh, distribution channel. <laughs> there you go. Yep. There you go. It. Well, Rick, this has been a, a pleasure. Um, thanks so much for um, coming on the podcast. And um, if anyone wants to um, learn more about um, G2 communications, uh, where, where should they go? All right. So it's G12, G12com.com. So Wait, what, what, did I, what, what did I say? You said G2. Cause that's the, uh, like the, the ratings website, right? Like G2 does all the, uh, uh, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like G uh, online G ratings or whatever. G12 communications. There you go. It's G12. Yeah. It's man. It's G12com.com. You can go there, take a look at it for business voice services, monstervoip.com for, you know, for small biz voice services and engage.co for, uh, web chat services, or you can just hit me up at our Garcia G12com.com. Right on. I'll put all that in the show notes, but, um, Rick, uh, congrats on all your success, man. I really enjoyed this conversation and, uh, rooting for you, man. And if you ever need a favor, uh, reach out. Um, cause I, I felt like I learned a ton of stuff on this podcast with you. That sounds good, man. Nice to, uh, nice to chat with you. Yeah. You as well. All right. Cheers. See you, bud. See you.